Hello and welcome to the ninth episode of the Bittersweet Uncomfiness podcast. Who am I to myself? A question that might have crossed your mind. It certainly crossed mine multiple times. We think we know who we are to our friends and to our family, but do we know who we are to ourselves? By asking myself this question and trying to find an answer and actually diving a bit deeper into this topic, I unlocked doors that made me understand myself better, love myself better, and also become happier. In this episode, I want to share with you how I did it, and I hope that you will find a way for yourself to do the same. So before we start, as usual, I'm Joe, and I hope you're not comfortable. But if you are, then let's get uncomfortable together. Hi, who am I? This is a question we've all asked ourselves or we were asked by someone to introduce ourselves and to say who we are, right? We do have identity cards and we know our names and we know where we come from, who our family is, but we don't truly know who we are. And we sometimes spend our lives trying to find that. And along the way, at one point, you will actually figure out who you are or I will figure out who am I. And... uh, Until then, it's a journey and we should enjoy it. We should not try to give ourselves an identity the whole time. It's something that we were more or less pressured into by society to have an identity, to fit in, to be able to represent ourselves and to be heard and meet new people and get recognized and so on and so forth. However, instead of asking ourselves, who am I or the questions of our existence, There is a simple question for me that changed everything because I know that I am this guy's friend. I know that I am my mom's son or my brother's brother and so on. But who am I for myself? What do I represent? Am I my best friend? Am I my worst enemy? Am I my critic? So by trying to find that out, I realized that I decide who I want to be for myself. And this helps us so much with the self-talk as well. When you catch yourself talking to yourself after you fuck up or you do something bad or even if you do something good, how do you talk to yourself? Are you a person who praises? Are you a a person who criticizes? Are you harsh on yourself? Are you um, good to yourself? And we, as I said in the first episode, we decide how we want to talk to ourselves. Maybe not at first, because at first maybe our ego has the best of us. But once we understand that we can drive our self-talk and we decide how we want to talk to ourselves, everything changes. Right now, when I make a mistake, I don't beat up myself. I used to beat myself up so much for mistakes I did that it just brought me into the cycle of self-doubt and self-hatred. And I wasn't really happy with myself at a point because I kept looking for bad things I'm doing um, to criticize and to hate on, right? So this voice in my head was controlled by something else, but not, not by myself. I was giving control to somebody else over myself because I was maybe socially um, influenced into thinking this way. Society told us that if you fuck up you you're a bad person even in school when you have bad grades your teacher talks to you in a way where it makes you become self-cautious um you feel like you're not worth it you're not enough and you try harder and after a while of people criticizing you for doing something bad you start criticizing yourself even more because you want to avoid the external criticism of people but it shouldn't be this way it doesn't have to be this way it doesn't because We learn so much every time we make a mistake, but we take all this learning and we stuff it somewhere because we only focus on the negatives that happened in that situation. So by choosing to be your friend, this can change. By choosing to be a good person to yourself, this can also change. So this is why the question is, who am I to myself? I wanted to be my best friend. Because I realized that I wasn't. And my self-love was not 
where it should have been. How could I love myself with all my flaws? And this, this is the way I used to think. How can you love yourself if all you do is criticize yourself and see yourself for the things that you're not good at or see your flaws in the mirror? Some people look at the mirror and they don't see their beauty because they are not their best friends or they are not in love with themselves. And it's not wrong to love yourself. It's totally fine to love yourself. It, you should love yourself. But the way that people promote self-love is a completely different one. They, they talk about self-love of maybe loving your appearance and being confident in your appearance. But that's not everything. Self-love means you treat yourself the way you treat your lover, your partner, your wife, your husband, your best friend, your mother, your son. This is how you should trust yourself and love yourself the way you love others, not any different. And you don't love the people in your life merely because they look good or they take care of their skin. You love them for deeper reasons. And the, the kind of love you give them, the support you give them, is a completely different one as well. And this is how our self-love should be too. It should be exactly the same. When you decide to be your best friend, you will be so much happier, so much more comfortable with yourself because you know that you have your own support to count on every time you fall, every time something happens, every time you meet an obstacle. You are there for yourself. You will pick up your pieces because you have yourself in yourself, right? So when we decide to be there for ourselves, we truly need to mean it. We truly need to feel it and live it. Not just say, yeah, I love myself, just because society told us to love ourselves now. It's a trend to love yourself. It's not a trend. It's way more than that. Self-love is essential for us to continue striving to become better, to continue living a, a happy life, a life full of joy. Not a life full of disappointment and fear. and uh, Because the fear sometimes of doing something, sometimes it's ex external, right? Because you, you are afraid to disappoint someone else. But when you criticize yourself so much, you get to a point where you don't want to do mistakes because you know that you're going to go home, look yourself in the mirror and either scream or just hate on yourself or not see yourself as good, you know? And that's how it was for me, right? I used to go home and as soon as I was alone, I, I used to go to war with myself. I used to beat myself up about everything I did wrong that day. And I did not um, soothe myself. I did not calm myself. Instead, I went on this rampage that after a while really got me doubting all my abilities. I was not able to perform anymore. I wasn't willing to perform anymore because I knew I will go home and not be able to look myself in the mirror. I cannot look myself in the eye because I disappointed myself. And why? Because I used to treat myself like a, a destructive critic. There are constructive critic there's constructive criticism and destructive destructive criticism. And we need to be constructive in our self-criticism. We cannot destroy ourselves every time. It will really, really break us. You can be your make or break person. You can either build yourself up to become who you want to become or to love yourself the way you want to, or you can break yourself entirely. Because once you start hating yourself, it is way, way worse than when other people hate you. And through that, people will hate you as well. Or you will always feel like people hate you because you don't put out the energy of love. You're always insecure. You're always scared. You're terrified of talking to people because you don't have love for yourself. You have no confidence in your abilities. I lost that entirely a couple of years ago. Entirely. I couldn't talk to myself anymore. Really. I avoided being alone for so long. I couldn't be alone in a room. I used to panic, really panic, because I knew that I needed to confront myself. And this fucked me up so much. When my best friends make a mistake that I did, 
I would never, ever, ever beat them up about it. But when I do the same mistake, I am not worth it. I'm not good. I'm such a loser and so on and so forth. And this truly got, got me into the cycle of doubt. I didn't enjoy life anymore. I didn't see the beauty of it anymore because all I saw was the negatives, which again, I talk about pretty often in this podcast so far. It is very, very, very important to look for the positives in everything we do. In everything we do, there is always a positive side, always. Even when you don't want to see it or you're actually not seeing it now, you will see it later. Don't doubt this. There's beauty in every struggle. Truly beauty in every struggle. Keep remem- reminding yourself of that. And when you need a shoulder to, to cry on, use your own. Not physically, because it's pretty impossible. But be there for yourself. Tell yourself it's okay. And that you're going to be better next time. The same way you do it for people you love. Okay, so the steps, there are five steps uh, that I used that got me to where I am today with myself and made me actually become my best friend. Step number one is I started actually listening to the way I talk to myself and I paid close attention to the way, the tone and the words I used, right? And then I started focusing more on how I talk to people when they feel down or when they did something bad or even when they did something good. And I tried to compare my voice to myself and my voice to people I love. And I realized they were not even similar. It was completely different. So start actively working on your voice towards yourself, how you speak to yourself, which words you use when you talk to yourself. It's very, very important. Step number two is I started looking myself in the, at, at myself in the mirror and seeing the beauty in me, whether it's my appearance or even I started looking into my eyes and started, started to see what's behind this face, what's behind my physical appearance. I started to see my emotions in the mirror. And after a while, you start looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing truly your life. And this helped me so, so much. I still look at myself in the mirror. Some people would say that I'm too like self-loving or attracted to myself because I look at myself in the mirror a lot. But I don't do it to confirm that I look good. I do it to see how I'm doing. I do it to see how I'm feeling. Because you cannot see yourself. You can only feel yourself. Which brings us to the next one. Point number three. Check in with your emotions. Check in with your feelings every day. Every time you you feel something in you, check in. Take a moment and try to understand what this emotion is. What are you feeling? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you disappointed? Um, are you furious with something? Check in with your emotions. Understand them. And with your beautiful voice, talk to yourself about them. Explain it to yourself. Have conversations with yourself. You are your best friend after all. Or you want to become your best friend. And how do you become best friends with someone? You start talking to them. You start listening to them. You start asking them about how they're feeling. Right? When your friend tells you something, you always ask, Oh, I'm sorry, how are you feeling? We never ask ourselves that. Never. Because we think we already know. Because we live our life. But we don't know. We don't know which feeling is in me right now. When I'm sad, I know I'm sad, but I don't know which kind of sadness. What's behind this sadness? Um, How deep is it? You cannot find that out by not talking to yourself, by not trying to find it out, right? So this is step number three. Step number four is start appreciating your life in in general, right? So when you wake up, promise yourself that you're going to have a good day. Promise yourself that you're going to be there for yourself along the way, the whole day. So when you have the support system in yourself 
And when you remind yourself of that every day in the morning, everything that happens throughout the day will make sense and will not be as hard because you promised yourself that it's going to be okay. The day is going to end no matter how much bullshit happens or even how much beauty you see. A day is going to end and at the end of this day, remember, it's you who's going to go to bed, close your eyes and fall asleep. Even if it's next to your partner, but you sleep individually and you wake up alone. Remind yourself that you're the only one you have every second of every day. And if you're not comfortable with that, then you start to work on it. Because it's also a process you have to go through. It's not something that happens for for you overnight. You have yourself every day, the whole day, your entire life. You only have yourself. So might as well have the best, best, best friend in yourself, for yourself. The fifth point is to love your existence. And through the voice that is in your head, that talks to you the whole day, remind yourself of that. Remind yourself that your chances were actually so slim of being here, of enjoying this humongous world with all the experiences in it, with all the beautiful moments, with all the bad moments. And it's a temporary journey. So it will end at one point. Time is not a currency you can get back. And this was the most important one for me. To realize that life could be over so quickly and I don't want it to be over while I'm hating on myself or while I'm fighting with myself or while I'm unhappy. I would really like when my life comes to an end, I want it to end while I'm being happy with myself, even if I'm alone by myself. Happiness is something that happens within us and you don't always have to have a reason to be happy. And when you're comfortable with yourself, happiness comes wherever you are. When you're happy with your mental state, with your life, You don't have to have more things to be happier. Maybe you'll be more comfortable. That's definitely given, right? When the financial freedom that people talk about. But money truly doesn't buy happiness. You can be a millionaire and still be depressed as fuck. And you can be broke and be happy. And you see this contrast all over the world. All over the world. You see people with nothing happier than people with a lot. And that's just because they're happy for being here, for being with themselves and because they love themselves. They are here for themselves. You're here for your best friends and you should be here for you. This world is you and you only because it's your life. Nobody sees your life from your perspective and nobody will ever see it from your perspective. And that's totally fine. In fact, that is even better. It makes it more interesting. Because that's, that's how you can share new perspectives and learn. Love your life and start loving yourself even if you feel like you're not worthy of it. Because you are. You always are worthy of your self-love. And through that, you'll be pushing yourself to do more, to become better. If you don't love yourself and you keep hating on yourself, you're going to lock yourself in. And you're going to be procrastinating. You're not going to be as productive But when you love yourself and you love life and you love the fact that you can be there for yourself, you will always feel confident to try new things, to go out, uh, to meet new people. And people will love you even more just because they see that there is love in you. And this is your self-love that people always talk about. So be your best friend, be there for yourself comfort yourself when needed Um, of course we need to criticize ourselves because how are we supposed to learn but we do it in the same way we would do it with people we love you don't go to somebody you adore and be like you're so fucking bad you know how to do nothing because you don't know you don't want to hurt their feelings well what about your feelings don't hurt those either those are your feelings those are the only Feelings that you can actually feel. You cannot feel the feelings of other people. Don't don't hurt your own feelings. Don't be your worst enemy. Be your best friend. Thank you all for listening. Um, It's the ninth episode, as I said in the intro. So it's been nine weeks. I truly did not know what to expect when I started this podcast with episode one. 
I feel happier, lighter while doing it. I'm a bit more confident doing it. I'm supporting myself while doing it. And I have a lovely, lovely team of people or a family of people that is supporting me through this journey. I'm thankful for everyone. I'm thankful for all the feedback. I'm thankful for every message I get and for every person who listens to this podcast. And it's going to be an amazing journey. I can promise there are a lot of new things that are going to come. And I'm very, 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 very excited. Stay updated. Next week is going to be a very special episode. Episode number 10. 10 is my favorite number. It's my lucky number. So might as well make it a very, very nice episode for you guys. And as I said, thank you for listening. If you want to reach out to me, you can do that uh, via social media. I will plug my TikTok and Instagram account in the podcast description. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, make sure to check out the YouTube channel as well. It's also going to be plugged in the description. We're now filming it so you can see my face while I'm talking to you. Maybe you can feel this episode even a bit better. See you all next week. Bye.